guys. So today we are going to do something fun. We are going to take this cute little bee present and we're going to make it together in this really beautiful thick extra blanket yarn. Okay, this is Burnett Blanket Extra and it's going to look something like this. Okay, so this is Burnett Blanket Extra in black. You're going to need a skein of black. You're going to need this really pretty softened blue is what it's called. Um, or you could do a white as well. So something that you want to use as the color for the wings. Okay. And then the last thing you're going to need is a nice vibrant yellow tone. You'll see that I've mostly used this one. So I'm hoping there's enough left. I've already gone ahead and made some of the pieces. So you'll kind of see here how big they're going to end up being. But we're going to need a total of six sides, okay? So I'm going to teach you how to make one side, and then you're going to go ahead and make the additional five sides on your own. But let's go ahead and get started making a side together. So for this pattern, I'm using a size N hook, which is a 10 millimeter hook, okay? On your skein, it's going to tell you to use a much larger hook, but for Amigurumi, you don't want to use the size that it shows on the skein uh, because it's actually going to leave a lot of gaps and holes if you do it that way. That's more for if you're making a blanket or something of that nature. So for Amis, you're going to want to size down. And depending on your tension, you might decide you want to go up or down from here. So if your tension is extremely tight, you might want to try using a bigger hook. If your tension is very loose, you might try sizing down your hook. So that's completely personal preference and also your tension size. But for me, I'm gonna go ahead and use this end hook. So we're gonna get started. We're working back and forth. We're not working in the round as you would normally do for amigurumis. We're gonna make flat pieces and then we'll sew them together. So you need to start off with a slip knot on your hook. So you're just gonna wrap your yarn around your fingers and then from the back, you're going to tuck that tail through this circle that's going around your two fingers here and you're going to gently pull your fingers out grab the tail and your working yarn here and then just start pulling this loop that you're creating here okay so this is a slip knot so you can see that it slips through it's not so tight that you can't make it tighter around your hook okay so go ahead and put your hook in and then you can tighten it just a little bit here. So now it's fastened to your hook. Now what you're gonna do is you're going to chain nine, okay? So to chain, you're just yarning over and pulling through. So that's one chain. And you're gonna to wanna to do this little, maybe a little bit looser than you would normally do because you don't want it to be too tight, okay, to start. So you wanna go ahead and do another chain. Again, yarning over and pulling through, yarning over and pulling through, okay? So you're doing this until you have nine chain. One, two, three, four, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, keep going, keep going, and then you should end up with nine chain. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, perfect. Okay, so that shows you how wide your square is gonna start. We will be doing a single crochet around border, so that will make it a little bit wider. Now we're gonna be working into the second chain from our hook, so you'll see we've got our hook. This little V here is the first chain from the hook. It's the second chain we're gonna to wanna to work into, okay? Going into that V, we're gonna to go to the back, we're single crocheting across, so we're yarning over from the back, pulling forward a loop. You've got two loops on your hook, yarn over again, and then pull through those two loops. That's one single crochet into your base chain. All right, now we're gonna go into the next one, going in through that V to the back, yarning over from the back, pull forward a loop, yarn over again, and pull through. Try not to make your tension too tight, because we want this to lie flat. So go ahead and go in through that V, yarning over from the back, pull forward a loop, yarn over and pull through. So this is just single crochets all the way across. You should end up with eight by the end of it, okay? Because you started in that second chain from the hook, 
the first chain did not get worked into and so even though you started with nine chains you skip that first chain and that gives you eight that you're working with okay this is the last one and it may start to bend and that's okay as you build up the sidewall it's not going to do that it'll start lying flat okay so now that's one row we've done our first row here single crocheting across you should have eight stitches now one two three four five six seven eight okay so you should end up with eight now that you've finished that row go ahead and chain one so you're just yarning over and pulling through to chain now you're turning your work okay so we chain one and turn now we're going to go ahead and work back across the braid that you just made here do you see that braid you see the v's one two three four five six seven eight okay so we're going to work back into those braids from the prior round making sure that you're going underneath both loops on the v here from each stitch okay so we're going to single crochet across so we're just going in making sure we get underneath that whole v that whole stitch yarn over from the back pull forward a loop yarn over and pull through going in underneath the v yarning over from the back pulling forward yarning over and pulling through okay going under the v yarn over from the back pull forward a loop yarn over and pull through and continue on your single crocheting all the way to the end so again this is eight single crochets across okay so the beauty of these side panels is they're very simple that's all we're doing okay we're just going back and forth so all we're going to do when we've reached the end here we've done our eight single crochets is we're chaining one and flipping our piece then we're working back across with single crochets now if you wanted to do a bigger b you could do half double crochets right you could do double crochets although you may end up with some gapping in which case your stuffing could show through but my recommendation would be probably stick with either single crochets or half double crochets but i did single crochets in this pattern so that's what we're working with here okay but if you wanted a little bit bigger one you could do that if you wanted a little bit smaller of one you could get the burnett blanket yarn not the extra that will get you a slightly smaller B um, and then we're just going back and forth as we chain one and turn at the end of each row and then we single crochet eight single crochets across we're gonna keep going with this guys we're gonna do this all the way through row eight okay so just to show you so you can kind of visualize if you're not sure you can either count your rows or you'll see these little blocks you see that these blocks are two rows okay so it kind of creates this little line or seam so this is two rows and another two rows so I'm on the fourth row that's how I know where I'm at or you can just make a tally mark so that you can recognize what row you're on but you want to make sure that you get eight rows of single crochet across for eight stitches each time all right i'm chain one and turning i'm going to keep working this up you guys do the same and i will meet you on row nine and we will do our single crochet border okay so here i am i'm on the very last stitch here counting my blocks two four six and eight so we've got our eight rows done we're going to do our ninth row is a single crochet around but we're going to do three single crochets in each corner so that way the piece will still lie flat okay so we finished this ending row here we've got one basically already done in this corner space so we're going to do two more in that space so one and two which allows us to now turn our work okay because we did three if you think about it right so we did the one that was the end of row eight then we did two more single crochets in that same space that same corner space now we're working up the side here 
okay? So what you're gonna wanna do is take a look and see. You're gonna want six single crochets along this edge and then we'll do our three in the corner, all right? So place them evenly. What I tend to like to do is do a stitch in the seam and then a stitch in the middle of these two then the seam, stitch in the middle, then the seam, stitch in the middle, okay? So we're gonna go in through that end of that seam area right there. So we're going in, yarning over, pulling through, yarning over, pulling through. Now we're gonna go into the middle between the two seams. Okay, that's two single crochets. Now we're gonna go back into the seam, the side space there. Okay, now we're gonna go into this middle Okay, so now we've got one, two, three, four. We're gonna go into the seam, that's five. Then again into that middle is six. So we've done our six along the edge. Now we're going into this corner space and we're gonna do three single crochets into the corner space. Okay, now we're turning our work Okay, now we're gonna work along this edge. Again, we're just doing six single crochets. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You wanna make sure your tension's not too tight. You may get a little bit of buckling. It's okay if it's a little bit, if it's a lot then you're gonna to wanna to probably take this out and then you can always add additional single crochets on the walls as long as you're consistent with every block that you make, it'll be fine. Um, so this is all dependent on your tension. You want it to lie flat ideally, okay, or mostly flat. So if you need to add additional stitches, you can. If you need to add additional stitches in the corner, you can. Again, just make sure that you're consistent so I'm doing three single crochets into this corner space again. Okay, now we're turning the work. We're gonna do our six, okay? So we're doing one in the middle, one in the seam. Again, I'm not going to, you wanna make sure that as you're doing this edging, you're not pulling too tightly. You wanna keep the stitches fairly loose as you're doing this edging to avoid as much of that buckling as you can. Okay, so I just did one in that center. Now I'm gonna do one in the seam. Okay, so we've got, okay. So we've got four so far. We're gonna go into the middle. Okay, into that seam. Okay, and now we've come back around to that very beginning of the row eight here, okay? So what we're gonna do, we've done our six along the edge. We're gonna go into that middle space. We're gonna do two more single crochets in that space, okay? And then we're gonna do a slip stitch into the first single crochet of row eight to connect, okay? So mine is buckling just a little bit and that's okay. You can also just kind of do this and sort of stretch it out a little bit. You can block it if you want to, um, but it, I don't find that it's necessary since you're making a plushie, we're gonna be stitching these all together and stuffing it. So it's okay again if it buckles just a little bit. If it's curling in like a bowl, then you might wanna go back and as I said, loosen your tension around the edge and add additional stitches. Just make sure that you're consistent so that you keep that square shape, okay? That's the goal here. You wanna keep this square shape that you're working with. So now we've done our slip stitch to connect, to finish off our square. We're gonna go ahead and cut away, leaving some tail here to stitch together our edge. Okay, pull that tail through the loop and then gently Tighten. Okay, so we've just finished that square. 
You're gonna go ahead and repeat this process five additional times. You should end up with six squares. So if you need to pause the video and go back and do, redo this together with me, then let's do that. So again, you want one, two, three, four, five, six. So imagine a cube, right? We're gonna need six sides. So go ahead and finish those sides and then come back. We'll make the rest of the pieces that we need. Okay, so you've got your six sides. Now we need two of these wing pieces, okay? So I've made one. I'm gonna go ahead and make another one with you guys and then you'll make this other second one on your own. Again, start with a slip knot on our hook. So we're wrapping the yarn around our fingers, coming in through the middle of that loop and then holding the two ends and then gently pulling on the loop to tighten them, okay? So now we've got our little slip knot we're gonna put our crochet hook in there and tighten it around the crochet hook. Now we're going to go ahead and start our chain. We need to chain eight. So yarn over, and again, loose tension here. Pull through, yarn over, pull through, and do this until you have eight chain on your hook here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight okay there we go so we've got eight chain we're going to be working into the second chain from hook so not into this first chain we want to go into the second chain from hook we're going to start with a slip stitch so go into the center v yarn over from the back pull through and we've got just two hook two loops on our hook then just pull that through that's a slip stitch okay now we're going to do a single crochet in the next. So we're going in through the center V, yarning over from the back, pull forward, yarn over and pull through. That's our single crochet. Next, we're going to go ahead and do a half double crochet. So we need to yarn over first. We're going into the center V, yarning over again from the back, pull forward. You should have three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. That's a half double crochet. Now we're gonna do a double crochet. We're gonna yarn over first, go into the next V, yarn over from the back, pull forward the loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through the last two loops. Okay, that's a double crochet. So next we're gonna do a another double crochet. We're gonna yarn over, going into the next V, yarning over from the back, pull forward the loop. We've got three on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Okay, there's another double crochet. Now we're gonna do a triple or treble crochet. So for that, we need to yarn over twice. So you start with three loops on your hook going to go into the next V, yarning over from the back, pull forward, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. That's it. Okay, so that's building a taller post there. So that's a triple crochet. Now we have one ending one right here, and one ending chain. We're going to do three triple crochets into this end, and then we're going to flip it around to work the other side of the wing. So yarning over twice, going into our V, yarning over, pull forward, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, that's one. Let's do two more. Yarn over twice, going into the same stitch and yarn over from the back. We've got four loops on our hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, that's two in the end chain. Now we're, so we need to do one more triple crochet into that same space. So we're gonna yarn over twice, go into that same space that we've been working on, yarn over from the back, pull forward, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, okay? This one is going to curl a little bit, but as you can see, that's actually to give it a bow look. So that's intentional, okay? 
If you didn't want that look and you wanted it to be flat, you could make additional triple crochets to curl around that edge. You just have to add additional stitches basically in order to make it a more flat piece. But for mine, I want it to look like a bow because this is a be present. It's to rem it's a little reminder to be present. Um, so that's that was kind of the goal of this little guy. So that's what we're going for. So it's okay for this one to curl on that side, okay? Now we're gonna do a triple crochet, but we're working back up this other ridge here, okay? So we've gone one, two, three. That was the three that we did around. This is the one, so you wanna find that post of the one you wanna work into. So you're going on the one opposite that, and you're gonna make a triple crochet. So we're yarning over twice. We're gonna go into the other side of that chain Okay, pulling through, yarn over, we got pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Okay, so now we've made that bend. Now we're gonna go back and we're gonna do our two double crochets, okay? So again, working right across, you're just going on the other side. Let's yarn over. We're gonna go opposite this first one here. Yarn over from the back, pull forward, yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through two, okay? Next one, yarn over again, going across, and pull a loop forward, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, okay? Now we're gonna do a half double crochet, yarn over, go into the one across, yarn over, pull forward, yarn over, pull through all the loops on the hook, because that's a half double crochet, okay? Now, we're gonna do a single crochet, so going across, yarn over from the back, pull forward, yarn over and pull through, all right? And then the last one that we're gonna do is a slip stitch. So we're going across, we're gonna do a slip stitch, okay? And then I like to just go in that very end and just do one additional slip stitch just to finish everything off to make sure you end up right there at the very tip uh, of where it's gonna attach for the bow. Okay, then we're gonna pull the loop out. We are going to cut a little bit, leave a little tail for sewing purposes. Go through the loop, pull the tail through it gently. Okay, you don't wanna pull too tight because this yarn can snap. Uh, if you're too rough with it. So, all right, so we've got our two little bow sides there, but we need that little center. So let's work on that. We're gonna use the same color. So bring up your, your new yarn here, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and form a magic ring. Normally I would do a double magic ring, and I'm gonna link to a video for you. There's three ways that you can start working in the round. And that is the video just up in the cards there. But today we're gonna go ahead and do a single, just a regular old magic ring, okay? We're not doing the double because this yarn is harder to do the double with without it snapping. So we're gonna create our pistol shape, wrapping around from the back, going once, going twice, hold the tail with your thumb. We're just gonna go through this quickly, going underneath the first, over the working yarn tail, Pull forward, make the A, pull out your fingers, yarn over, and pull through. That creates basically a slip stitch on a ring, okay? So that's what that is, and there's your tail. With your working yarn now, we're gonna work back into the loop, okay? Making sure that you're going around the tail. So go into the loop, yarning over from the back, pull forward, yarn over and pull through, that's a single crochet. So you've done one single crochet now. You need to do five more, we want six in the ring, okay? So we've got one, yarning over from the back, pull forward, yarn over, pull through, that's two. And then we're gonna keep going, there's three, here's four, we got five, and do I hear six, yes! We've got six, all right, six single crochets on our ring there. Okay. Now pull this without it snapping, okay? Because this is a little bit of a temperamental yarn. I'm not gonna lie. So we're gonna gently pull, 
wiggle if we need to to kind of loosen up the loop that's in the middle of our stitches here and we're gently just kind of pulling all right I apologize if it's temperamental it is the nature of this yarn it doesn't like magic rings um, although they still can work you just have to be careful not to snap the yarn and I've snapped many in my time so <laughs> do your best um, if you can okay so we've got six single crochets in our magic ring and our now our tail has been pulled tight and it's formed the ring without any gaps so which is perfect all right so now place your stitch marker Okay, so I'm just going to use this long piece of scrap yarn here for now because I just want to go ahead and continue on. What we need to do now is single crochet in each of those six stitches around, okay? So we're not increasing, we're just single crocheting around. And so we're going under the V and then going into the back to pull forward a loop, yarning over and pulling through, just usual single crochets as usual. And then as you're going, you may need to kind of use your nail to pull the, that V up onto your hook here. Yarn over from the back, pull forward, yarn over and pull through. So as you're going, we're not increasing, we're not decreasing, we're just keeping the single crochets around. And that's just going to create that little bump in the center of the bow that kind of emulates where you would tie a bow. Here we go, we're almost done. And I got one more. Yarning over from the back, pull forward, yarn over, and pull through. Okay, so now I'm back at the start. I'm going to take out this scrap yarn. I'm going to slip stitch into the next to finish off. So I'm going under the V, yarning over, pull forward, and then just pull that straight through. That's a slip stitch. So we're connecting it back around. Now we're just gonna go ahead and clip this away because we're done with it. That's all that we needed, okay? And again, pulling through the tail, through that loop, and then gently pulling. So see, it just kind of created a little cap, if you will, and that's what our little bow is going to attach to on the top of our bee. So it'll kind of look like this, right? So we're making that bow shape. So that's what that is, okay? As I said, we're gonna get the stinger going. So you need your black yarn. So go ahead and grab your black yarn. All right. So I'm just pulling from the outside. I have a very hard time with yarn barf coming from the center and I can never find the end anyways. So this one also we are doing in a magic ring, but instead of six single crochets into a magic ring, we're doing four. So we're making our pistol shape going around from the back once and twice, holding it with our thumb, going under the tail, up and over the working yarn, pull the working yarn forward to make our A. Slip your finger out, but still hold that ring on either side, yarning over from the back and pulling through. That created our slip knot. Now, I warned in the video, I'm gonna link above, these are five tips and actually there's a bonus, so there's six tips for new crocheters of amigurumi that black was not a yarn that you want to start off with if you're new to crocheting amigurumi. And I still hold true to that. Do your best to see the stitches, okay? Um, it's not easy and you may not see it very well on the camera here, but I'm hoping that you can see it okay. So we're going into that center ring we're going to yarn over from the back, pull forward, yarn over, and pull through. That's one. Going in and doing another. There's two. Okay, we got three. And last, we've got four. Okay. We're going to pull the tail gently to close our, our ring. Sometimes you need to take your hook out. Okay. This yarn in particular has given me a lot of problems with that. There it goes. It's like it just has to decide it wants to work with you. Okay, so now that we've got that back, get your scrap yarn. I've got a smaller scrap now, so I'm just gonna use this. And that's just to create a stitch marker for me because I don't have one handy. All right, 
This is very fluffy yarn. You'll notice little bits coming off. <laughs> All right, so for round two, we're gonna just single crochet around. So just like we did before, we're going under the Vs of the prior rounds stitch. Yarn over, pull forward, yarn over, pull through the two. It's one single crochet. You know, with the black yarn, you may need to feel for the stitches. If you can't see it very well, you can also shine a flashlight, get, just get some more light on it. That hot, often will help you to see those stitches. I have enough light, I can see them, but uh, it's not always the case. <laughs> All right, and I've got one more here. Okay, so now I'm gonna remove my stitch marker, place it again, remove any fluff <laughs> that's trying to jump, jump colors here. All right, for the last round, we're gonna do the pattern single crochet and then an increase two times, okay? So we're going into the next stitch with a single crochet, just as usual. So find your stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through, there's single crochet. Now you're gonna increase in the next, so find your stitch, and you're gonna do two single crochets into that one stitch from the prior round, so that increases your round, okay? So we just did two into that last one there. Now we're going to the next, we're gonna just do a regular single crochet and last stitch. Okay, find your last stitch here. We're gonna do two single crochets into the last stitch for an increase otherwise. Okay, in other words. All right, now we've finished. You're gonna pull out your tail if you've got it there, your stitch marker. All right, and you're just gonna go into the next and do a slip stitch to connect. Okay, that's it, that's the little stinger, see? Okay, so pull the loop up, leave a little tail to stitch it to the back side once we get there. And there you have it, it's like a little triangular shaped stinger. <laughs> so just to show you size difference, it's quite a bit bigger than the other one. All right, so we've got our stinger. I wanna go ahead and add a couple of extra details. So these are gonna be different than the original bee pattern. These are gonna be little feet, and I'm gonna also get a couple of little black antenna going on the top there. So let's go ahead and get started. So you need your black yarn. You're gonna go ahead and make your pistol shape, going around from the back once and twice, okay? Holding it with your thumb. Go ahead and go under the tail yarn, going up and over your working yarn and pull that forward to make your A. Slip your fingers out, but keep that working yarn in your fingers here. Go ahead and yarn over and pull through to secure. Now you've got your ring. Working into our magic ring, we're gonna do four single crochets. Yarning over from the back, pull forward, yarn over and pull through both. Again, there's two. There's three and four. Okay, and these are super simple, okay? So now we're gonna pull our tail. We've got our little magic ring here, and all we're doing is a single crochet in each one. So you could put a stitch marker if you'd like, or you can just go around, and you're only doing it once. So as I said, these are super easy. You're just gonna go single crochet around, so this will be four stitches, so there's one, Here's two, here's three, here's four, and then we're gonna slip stitch in the next. Okay, and fasten off, leaving a tail to sew down your foot to the bottom of the B if you're choosing to add feet, okay? So that's one foot, it's just a little tiny circle basically, right? And this is the same as what you did on the top, except for instead of six single crochets in Magic Ring, you're doing four. Make six of those if you'd like. You could do four if you want four little feet. Totally up to you. Traditionally, six is how much a bee has. So I've got, 
I'm gonna go ahead and make six, okay? I'll meet you back at the end of that and we will go ahead and do the antennas. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and make another antenna. This is what the little antennas will look like. So they do a, like a little bit of an arch towards the front. Okay, so grab your yarn. We're gonna start with a slip knot on our hook. So I've wrapped this around. I'm coming back through that center circle, grabbing both tail and working yarn and pulling up on the loop that that's created. I'm pulling it tight around my hook. Okay, so now we've got our working yarn. We're gonna start by chaining four. Okay, so chain one, yarn over and pull through, that's two. Yarn over and pull through is three. Yarn over and pull through is four. Okay, so you've got four chains right here. Now we're gonna go back into the second chain from your hook and we're gonna do a single crochet in the second chain from the hook. Now we're gonna go ahead and do a single crochet in the next chain. Again, you're going through the center of the V and yarning over from the back. Okay, so then we've done two single crochets back up our chain. We have one more chain left here, so we're gonna do a slip stitch in the last chain. Now we can fasten off and pull the end through our loop, and that's it. That's the little antenna. Okay, so now you should go ahead and make one more so that you have two, and at this point, we've made every piece that we're gonna need, so at this point, we're just gonna finish assembling our bee. I'll meet you back when you're finished with the antennas, and we will go ahead and do the final assembly. Okay, so we've got all of our pieces here. We've got all six pieces of the sidings. You should have your bump for the top of the bow, the two wing sides, the stinger, and then if you chose to make feet, then you'll have those six little bump feet as well. So now we get to assemble. So let's go ahead and get started with assembling. You're first just gonna need the first two sides. So just take two sides, put the rest off to the side. What you'll notice on this little guy is that the way that the rows are facing, you'll see this is going vertical, right? Vertical. So I did vertical all the way around and then if you were looking at the face, you would just go this direction all the way around, okay? So that's the goal. So you're gonna need a yarn needle with a fairly large size eye. A yarn needle. We don't need this one, so you can fasten it off, clip it away, however you wanna work it. So I'm gonna work, I'm gonna start working the sides first. All right, so I'm gonna grab one of the tails available. Okay, so we're gonna be whip stitching the sides together. All right, so we'll see over here that we're not gonna be starting in the corner because of where we had to round the corner in order to finish off the square. So you wanna align the sides Make sure that they are matching up. And in this case, so I'm going backwards just to get this little piece here, all right? And we're gonna be whip stitching the two sides together. All right, so now I'm gonna go into this corner space from the outside underneath to the wrong side. The wrong sides are, fall, are down right now. We're gonna go from the inside out along underneath that V there Okay, then we're gonna pull. That's just starting our whip stitching the sides together, okay? So now you can go back just to get an extra little stitch here into that same one because you're gonna then jump back up our line here to the next stitch that's unworked, okay? So we're going in from the inside out. Okay. 
So now that end is secure. Now we can continue the other side. So you can pick it up now and kind of fold it like a burger, making sure the wrong sides are facing each other and the right sides are out. And now we're just going to go ahead and whip stitch the remaining. Okay, so from this side over here, we're going to go out and around from the outside in, then to the next stitch from the inside out. We are just whip stitching these sides together for our outside in and then inside back out again, again. And then we're just going all the way down the line. Now make sure, there we go, so that's the stitching two sides together. So then this is going to just begin our little B present, okay? So this is just building the two first walls here. So we're making a square. Uh, and so what you can do is you can start picking up the different pieces and try, depending on how long your tail is, you can use up the tail as you go. But what you're gonna do is grab your next piece. Okay, so we've got two walls built. And again, this is gonna be the outside of the body. So you want all of these outside lines to be vertical, okay? So when you're looking at your piece, these are the lines, all right? So you're gonna want the outside to all be vertical, facing up. Now, if this is your face piece right here, then this will be the top of your B. So make sure that the line is vertical, okay? So the face, the line is following along, okay? So now you're gonna start connecting the different pieces together. And to do that, you're gonna have to get to these corners, making sure that they're all connected. So you're gonna go from one side to the next corner and then grab that other corner okay and then come back into that so you're basically making a circle right to connect all three sides together in that corner so see now the corner is connected okay now you can flip it and you can start connecting the side as usual so if this tail is still long enough, this is what you're gonna do, okay? So you're kind of piecing the tails together as you go, whatever you end up needing. You may not need all the tails, in which case you can just go ahead and fasten them off to the back side. Um, but whatever you can utilize, then it's easiest just to do that. So now I've got the corners connected. So I'm gonna go into the next stitch, going from the outside in and then the inside out. Okay, making sure you get both edges of that V on both sides. And now we're whip stitching up the next side. So going again, outside into the middle, then the middle over to the next stitch here. And you're just utilizing that tail as far as it can go before you tie off and pick up another tail to continue making that cube shape. So you get to that corner space again. And again, you don't want to get in the very corner space. Remember you did three, right, in each corner. So you're going to go up until the last of one edge, not the corner space, because that you need to connect between three sides. Okay, so this is going to be our last stitch of this side. Okay, so now you're starting to get that cube shape. It's kind of gonna, you have to envision it, okay? So you've got, now you've got three sides. They're not connected here, not yet. They're connected here and here, okay? So now you can grab, if you still have a tail, you could keep going or you can tie it off and then pick up another one. That's up to you, whatever you have on yours, okay? So I'm gonna grab another piece I'm going to put that one over here because I'm going to work along this side. So you kind of have to figure it out as you go. And it doesn't really matter, guys, okay? Because ultimately all you need to do is make sure you're whip stitching every edge and that you've gotten your three together in the corner so that you have that nice corner fastened. 
All right, so from here, I'm gonna go into the corner space, going from the outside in, inside out, inside out. Okay, so I'm finding that corner space, which is, let's see, it's this one. Okay, now I'm just pulling that through and then I'm gonna go ahead and go back from the out, from the inside out to that first one just to create that, that center circle there in that corner space. Now I can turn it, I can fold it like a burger, and then again we're working along the side. So it just makes it easier as you're visualizing going around this cube. All right, so again we're going from the outside in, inside out, making sure you're getting both edges of that V. Okay, once you've done another end, if you still have any yarn left, you can continue to use it. I ran out on this side. So what I'm going to do is go back into that same stitch. Okay, so I'm going to jump back across so I can go to the back side of our work here on the back side. So I'm just tying a knot. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut away. All right, so we've got four sides so far, you guys. Rather than adding another side, let's go ahead and utilize some of our other tails here so we can build the cube shape. All right, so attach to whatever tail you're using. All right, make your burger figure out where you're at. So in this one, again, I need to get back to that corner to make sure that I've fastened this corner together, okay? So what I'm gonna do is again, go from the outside in and then go back a stitch so that I can get this corner together, make sure that the corner is fully connected, okay? So I'm gonna go into this one and into this one just to make sure we're basically just kind of doing a stitch around here into the corner space. Then you can go and come up from, so you're going again. Now I'm on this side, I'm going around from the outside to the inside, and then I'm jumping now, okay, to go back so that I can start working up the other side. So I've come to a point where I need to attach another side. All right, so I'm in the corner now. So I'm gonna go in to the corner of this one, which is right here, and then go into the corner space of this one. Okay, so again, we're going in our circle here. We're gonna go back into that same corner, come out on the stitch next to where we were. Okay, we've got our little corner made. Now we've got our little hamburger here, so we're just gonna go ahead and continue to whip stitch around, going across, outside in, inside out, and just working along the next side. So I finished that side. Now we've got one more side that we need to attach and then we'll just have to make sure all of these little sides have been attached. All right, so grab your last piece. Now again, we're going from the corner to the corner, from the outside in, then going to the third corner, all right, from the inside out. Then back across to that original side. Then we're gonna go ahead and jump to the next stitch. Okay, so we've got that little corners connected. So now we've just got one corner connected. All right, so now we're gonna lay it flat again. 
And we're just going outside in, inside out to the next one, and whip stitching along the side. Okay, so one thing you can do, if you come across another tail but you still have more and you wanna keep going with it, you can tuck the tail into the inside of the piece and kind of just work around it. Um, if you were gonna put a foam cube in, you'd wanna make sure that you do that before you get too many sides put together. Um, so I only have these two edges left to stitch, but what I need to do before I do that is to pick a side and put the face on, okay? So pick a side. It's okay if the lines aren't 100% you know, matching up, that's okay. Just pick a side that works for you. Get your safety eyes. Put your safety eye backing on. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've popped the eyes in. Now I've gotten some just regular blanket yarn. There's Big Twist blanket yarn you can use. It's called Big Twist Plush which is what this is, or you can use just Bernat blanket yarn, which is what this is, to make the little details on the face. So we're not gonna knot the end because it would most likely just pop through. So we're gonna be tying this off on the inside of the piece. So we're gonna go in through the hole that we still have left. Okay, you're gonna come up where you want the, the little smile to sort of end. So where I'm using this one as a guide Okay, so this, this is where we're starting here. So you pull it until you can get the end with your other hand, right? So make sure that that doesn't come through. Go over to where you're gonna want your smile to end, but we're gonna take a little stitch to bring the smile down. So we're gonna need to go kind of in the center area, but just below. Okay, otherwise we'll end up with kind of a smirky face. We bring this down a little bit, okay? And then we're gonna do a little cheek mark. First, what I'm gonna do is pull this in. Okay, so that's given us that cute little smile. So you could keep it like this if you wanted to, or you can do the little cheek mark, which is what we have right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the cheek mark you can choose if you want to do that or not. I'm going to come up here. Okay. And then I'm going to bring it down. So you want the, it, you're just doing a straight stitch, but you want it to make sure that it's touching the smile, right? Okay. So I'm just going to do my straight stitch. And there's my little cheeky grin okay so now if you're happy with that then what you're going to do is you need to tie off the inside okay so you have your two ends and you're just going to tie them you're just going to tie at least a double knot you could triple knot it if you want gently don't tie it too tight you don't want it to pull on the smile that you've just made you're just trying to fasten the end on the inside and create a knot so it's not going to come out tie it as many times as you want to um, and then that's that you just snip away the end or tuck it in and you're done with the black yarn now we need to get our pink yarn to do our little cheek marks so I've got my pink yarn here so we've got our back to looking at our cute little face here. So we're doing the same thing. I'm not knotting the end because I'm going to just knot it on the inside. So I'm coming up on the stitch that's below in the center of the eye. Okay, making sure I leave that tail so that I can tie it off later. And decide how far over you want the cheek marking. You might want one stitch, you might want two stitches personal preference. Okay. I think I want, I want one more stitch here. So I'm going to go one more time. Okay. So then once you've done your little stitches for the cheek on this side, 
you're going to come to the next eye again just coming up in that stitch just under the eye and you're going to do the same thing you did on this side on this side so if you did two stitches here do two stitches here if you did one stitch just do one stitch if you did three stitches do three stitches you get the point <laughs> but you want them to basically match each other. So if you need to fluff them up a little bit, you can do that. But that looks really cute. Look at that little face, you guys, so cute. All right, when you've finished with that, you can tie off the end on the inside, just as you did with the black. Make sure it's not gonna go anywhere, okay. All right, so now that your face is stitched on, you can go ahead and, and finish off with the sides and stuffing your little guy. So if you're gonna do a foam cube, you wanna make sure you get that in there now before you close off the final side. If you're gonna do just uh, stuffing, then that works too. You'll just make sure that you're gonna stuff it before we close it, okay? So you have options. All right, so I've stuffed mine. I have one side left to whip stitch closed. I did not use a foam cube, so mine is gonna be more rounded than square. Um, but it almost looks like one of those like yarn balls, you know, where you see the different sides kind of coming together because you can see the, the lines and whatnot, but I think it's cute. I'm excited. Or it looks like a Roblox noob head, <laughs> depending on how you look at it. Now that we've done that, let's go ahead and whip stitch this closed. All right, one more side, guys. We're almost there. And then once you've finished all the sides, just double check your stitching and make sure you didn't leave any gaps anywhere, that anything has not been completely fastened. I believe we've got all of our sides done. And then we're gonna go ahead and just tie this guy off. Okay, so find, just go to any other space, doesn't matter where. You're just gonna pick up a stitch and you're gonna tie it off. Here, get that tail out of there. Okay, you're gonna tie it off like so. And kind of lift it up and see where the stitch is below. Go into that, come out somewhere else. and pull the knot in, okay? Again, you might end up with some stuffing. Just shush it away, and then you can go ahead and tie off, snip away, and take your needle, kind of wiggle that little tail in or tuck it in if you need to. And there's the little head. So it's actually quite a bit bigger than this other one, isn't it? Kind of a beach ball, isn't it? All right, so, now that we've got that, we need to go ahead and do this, the stripes. So it's a little striping around. So let's, let's go ahead and do that next. We've finished sewing our face on and I've gone ahead and done the first stripe. And so this is what we're gonna be doing. So you're gonna decide if you wanna do two stripes or three stripes but you're gonna want to just kind of like eyeball where you want it, how far away from the face you want it. This is all really personal preference. So you can see I kind of made mine out and around. So I'm gonna go ahead now and make some parallel, make another one that's parallel um, to this line. And so what I'm gonna do for mine, and you can do one of two things. If you wanna do three, stripes then as you can see with this little guy here I attach the bow right onto that center line here or you could have the bow here and then you could just do these two lines so that's completely your personal preference if you want two lines or three lines okay so let's go ahead and get started now what I like to do is I start at the bottom so flip your B so that you're on the bottom of it and then it doesn't really matter where you connect, um, but just decide how far you want your first stripe and then you know subsequent stripes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start one here. So I'm going down into my piece and I'm coming up right next to it. 
And the, the hardest part of doing the stripes is to keep them straight. So, you know, even if you need to use this as a guide and kind of eyeball it a little further up, you can do that. That kind of just shows you where you want to get your stitches in. Take your working yarn, okay, grab it with your hook, pull through. Now you should have two loops on your hook. See, one and two. Now pull that through your first loop, and that's doing a slip stitch, okay? So what we're doing is we're gonna be doing slip stitches all the way around, and it actually gives it this sort of a chain look. So this prevents us from having to actually make a chain and sewing it down. This actually works it right onto your piece, so it's less sewing. So that was the whole purpose of doing it this way. I did try doing the other way, which was to create the chain and then sew it down. And you can see that I did not do them very straight, you guys. So this way I feel is a lot better. It's easier, it's less sewing. And so you can't, you can't uh, beat that, right? So I'm just gonna keep going. So I'm gonna go back in where my yarn is coming out. I'm gonna go back in there up next to it onto the next row and then pull through we're yarning over and pulling through two loops and then just pull that through so there's another slip stitch you don't need to make these too tight okay so watch your tension going back into the same space that this tail is coming from coming up to the next available space here and pulling up a loop and pulling it through, okay? And you're just gonna keep on going. Again, making sure you're keeping your, stri your striping as even as you can. Once you've got one, it's a lot easier because you're just looking at this, right? You wanna make sure that this space between is staying consistent. So that becomes a good guide for you. But you're just gonna keep going doing your slip stitches all the way around your B. Okay, I'll meet you back at the end of this stripe and we'll go ahead and finish off this one. Okay, so once you've gotten back to the end, you're gonna go ahead and slip stitch into the first one that you did here and the beginning of your stripe. You're slip stitching to connect and then you can go ahead and cut away the rest. And then we're going to just be basically just tucking in these ends. So we're gonna sew the ends in. So get your yarn needle. So I'm just gonna go into the V of the next stitch and then come back around underneath, coming out next to another part of the black stripe. Okay, so that brings my tail down here. Now I can go ahead and pick up a stitch, a black stitch, and then we'll just tie our yarn off. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead and lift it up, find the gap underneath your little stitch that you took there, come out somewhere else, and then just pull and tuck the knot into the inside of your piece. You can cut away this end and then tuck it in, okay? You'll do the same with this other tail that was from the very beginning of your stripe. So we're just gonna go in nearby where we are already and come out somewhere else. And then we're gonna take a stitch or rather fasten off our tail here just to make sure nothing comes undone. Okay, now that we've got our little knot, we're gonna lift up, find the hole underneath, pull out somewhere else, and tuck that in, okay? And go ahead and cut that one away, and just hide that little tail on the inside. You might have little bits of black fluff that you need to remove, because this yarn does do that from the edges. And you have little bits of stuffing here and there too. So we've got two stripes down. Here's the face. So we've got two stripes. So I'm gonna do one more stripe on mine and then 
I will meet you back and then we'll go ahead and do the next step. Okay, so here we are, we've got our B. Our B has its stripes already. So now we've got to add a few more details. So I've got the face facing me. That just makes it easier. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start attaching the wings. The wings are gonna be right here on this center line. So this is giving me a nice little guide here. So the first thing you wanna do is attach the little center of your bow. Now, looking from the top, make sure you're centered. Make sure you look at the face. It's always good to just kind of refer back, right? Look at the face, look at the top, make sure that the top and the face are even, that you're not way over here, unless you wanted wings that were sideways, like a sideways ponytail or something. Okay, but for me, that center is right about there. So we're just gonna whip stitch this down. Okay, so we're going into the yellow body here and we're just pulling up a loop. This, these are the stitches that were left at the end of making this little bump here. So we gotta make sure we go from the outside to the inside, then back into that same space where your tail's coming from. And then you're gonna go over where your next stitch is gonna be. Okay, gently pull. Do the same thing, okay? And continue to double check your work. So make always make sure that you're referring back to the face and the placement because it's very easy as we are tacking this down for things to shift. You can use pins to try to help you with keeping things the way that you need them to be as far as placement is concerned. Um, or you just kind of wing it, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm just kind of winging it. Okay, and again, we're just gonna go all the way around. We're going from the outside into the center, back down in where our tail's coming from, going up to the next area where we wanna make a stitch, and then gently pulling, again, checking our placement. Then we're gonna get the next one going back into that same space, coming over, and we're going around, right? So you wanna make sure that when you're coming over that you're gonna be where you want it to be for it being a circle. Okay, so I'm again just checking my placement and that's looking good. At this point, you've done enough stitches so you shouldn't have it shifting on you. You've just got another one or two more left. Okay, I think I've got one more left here and then it's fully tacked down. You're gonna to wanna to come back up next to one of the other blue stitches because we need to tie off. So as you can see, I'm coming up next to this stitch that I made when I whip stitched it and I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off, which is tying a knot. I'm gonna lift it up to, so I can see where that hole is underneath, going back in through that hole some, and coming out somewhere else, doesn't matter where. And then we gently pull and we just pull it enough to get that little knot to go into the inside of our piece here. Okay, now we can snip away the end and tuck in the tail there. Okay, so now you can't see it. Now he's got a little bump on his head. <laughs> quite cute actually. <laughs> it could be like a little hat or something or a little bun. But instead we're going to go ahead and we're going to finish off his his wings which is the bow of the present for the bee present. For mine I'm going to have it kind of tacked down from the corner and then over to here. Okay so you're not actually tacking the whole bow down. You're just tacking down however many you would like so that you can leave the rest unworked and it can just be kind of like this cute floppy wing, right? So for me, I'm just gonna go ahead and tack down about an inch or so, maybe an inch and a half. And I'm gonna tack it down both in the front and also in the back just so that way my bow, that, that pretty sort of 
inner bow area is going to be facing forward so that's why I want to make sure that I'm tacking it and telling it where I want it to be and that way this is the only part that could then move okay so let's do that now so you're going to want to start by going in right next to your little bump here that you've made because you want it to look like it's connected in all one piece all right so that's the first stitch is going to be right into that little bump so now that we're connected I'm going to go ahead and just do a few stitches now I'm going from the inside here out and I'm going to come up next door here again we're kind of working around that stripe that we've got so that's a good gauge and it's a good guide for us all right if it gets stuck just go slower okay I'm going to take another one I'm going inside to the out and then back into that same space coming up next to it all right so you can see the front we've got our little bows coming together here now we're going to the back and we're just going to take a little bit a couple little tacking stitches just to kind of make sure that the wing is facing upwards so I'm taking just a stitch from the back side of the wing all right so you're not going to want to go into the black you want to go behind it okay so you don't want to stitch you want to make sure that you're not splitting that stripe okay see we're going to go around it so we've got stitches in the front of the stripe and then we'll have stitches in the back of the stripe okay now I'm going to grab this stitch here I'm going to tack that down and I'm going to go up next to it we're basically covering the stripe just in this one little section here as we get back to this little bump area of our bow okay and once you get back to the bump you can actually use put your stitches into that space and that way all the blue is connected and I'm just going to take one more right in the center here going from the inside out and then back down into our little bump here coming out somewhere else because this is the point where we're going to be fastening off this wing and you can see from the front that we've got it nice and tacked it's still floppy enough to where it feels more like wings right and then we're going to go ahead and tie off here. I'm just tying it off into this little bump. So we finished that one. Go ahead and do the other wing in the very same way. This way it's going to go about an inch on this side, okay? Just like that. And that way you've got your little bow finished. All right, so go ahead and tack that side down now, and then we will come back and we'll do the rest of the little bits that we've got left. Okay, so we've got our little bow finished. Next up, let's go ahead and attach the stinger on the back. Grab your stinger, here's mine, and decide where you want the stinger, okay? So you can look at the face and the front here. You can decide do you want it parallel straight through to from where the eyes are do you want it up high do you want it down low that's up to you i'm going to kind of put mine smack dab in the middle and i'm going to go ahead and whip stitch this little guy down so mine is in line with the top of the bow so you'll see where the bump is that's where my stinger is lined up to since i centered mine and I left my stinger unstuffed because it's a thick yarn and so with these small pieces like this I don't feel like it really needs stuffing but you're welcome to add a little bit if you'd like okay I'm just checking my stinger placement all right this is gonna be the final one coming up somewhere else next to another part of the black yarn and now I'm gonna go ahead and tie this off again lifting it up to find that hole underneath 
coming out somewhere else. Gently pull, snip away your tail and tuck in that little piece right there. Okay, there's my little tail or my little stinger. So it's pretty well in line with the eyes. My eyes are right here. So you can see that it's pretty well in line. Okay, so he's got his stinger, he's got his wings, and now if we were doing this one, he would be done. But because, this guy's so big, he just fills up the screen. Um, but because I wanted to add a few little more touches to this little big guy here, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. So I'm gonna add his antennas next. So if you made your antenna, go ahead and grab those and you're gonna decide where you want your antennas to go. So, you know, hold it up with your little guy. Do you want them close together, further apart, in the middle, in line with the eyes perhaps? Completely personal preference. Okay, the, a, lot of, a lot of making Omnis are your personal preference and what you think looks cute, right? Okay, so mine are gonna be just inside the eyes if I'm looking straight up. That's where I think it's gonna be cute on my little bee here, or my big bee here. <laughs> All right, so this one's gonna go right here. So you're just gonna take a couple tacking stitches here and if you need to, you can either tie off to the black around the antenna or you could come up here where your striping is and tie off closer to the stripe. If, so I'm just gonna tie it off to the stripe because this is just a, such a small little antenna. I don't have much area to tie it off. in. So there's your little antenna on your bee. Now we're going to go ahead and do the final step, which for this little guy, if you would like, is to be his feet. So let's go ahead and grab those feet. What I'd recommend is to start with the front ones. The front ones would be nice because it'll help him to stand how you'd like him to, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and start with the front two and then I'll work my way to the back and you can make as many as you'd like up to six. So you could do two feet in the front and that be the end of it. You could do four feet, two in the front and two in the back or you could do six feet where you do two two in the middle and two in the back. So find where the top part is of your little cap that you've made here. Set your bee down and make sure that you wanna make sure of where he want, you want him to stand. So using a flat surface as placement. And then once you've found the spot that you want, you're gonna go ahead and tack it down. The first two feet are gonna be in if you sewed your striping as I did, will be in front of the stripes, okay? So my first two feet are gonna be in the front of the stripes. Okay, that's the first two little feet. Look how cute he's coming out. So again, you can leave that with just two feet if you would like. He looks kinda hard to see, I know, but um, you could do that. You could put just two more over here or you can add and do the total that I have, which is six feet, right? So two in the middle, two in the back. So let's, I'm gonna start by doing two in the back and then we'll see how it looks. Okay, so I've got four of the feet on. You can see them here. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the other two and how I'm gonna have them situated is slightly out so that when you're looking at the bee from straight on, it almost looks like it's got like back feet sticking out straight, you know? I think that's gonna be really cute. So I'm gonna work on that um, and getting these last two feet on my bee and then we will circle back at the end for final pictures. And there you have it, guys. 
Our cute little bee, or big bee in this case, is all finished. Look how cute he looks. From the front, from the side, with its cute little bow here. From the back, we've got its little stinger here. And from the other side. Oh, look at him. Look at the cute bee. Let's give him a good little look. And just to compare in size to our original B present, he is quite a bit bigger, I would say. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Did you enjoy making this B with me? <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like and subscribe and don't forget to hit that notification bell so be let know of any new videos that come out here on frizzy bee thanks guys <laughs>